Welcome to A-Level and AP Physics. In today's lesson, we will discuss past paper question on gravitational field from May June 2022, paper 4, variant 1. In today's class, we will discuss this question in detail so you can have clear understanding of this topic. Let's study together. Let's improve together. In today's class, we are talking about paper 970241. And this paper is from May June 2022. And total time for this exam is 2 hours. We need to answer all questions on this paper and the total mark for this paper is 100. On second page of your exam paper, you can find values of some important constants. So maybe you will need some of them for some calculations in your exam. So here is list of all important constants. Maybe you will need some of them in your exam. If you go to next page, on the next page, you can see a list of formulae. On one side, you can see all the formulae for for ES physics. So these formulae are from ES physics. They are from ES. And these all formulae, they are for A2 physics. So these are for A2 physics. But there is one subtle change in this formula list. In 2022, they have added these theory formulae here. Because in new syllabus, we have new topic about astronomy and cosmology. So these formulae are for astronomy and cosmology. And this formula is for ultrasound. So this one is for ultrasound. So these are three new formulae in this formula list. And these formulae are from astronomy. For question number one, part A, we need to state Newton's law of gravitation. And Newton's law of gravitation is a very common question from gravitation field. If you see any question about gravitation field on your exam paper, there are 80% chance they will ask you to state Newton's law of gravitation. And this question has two marks or three marks. So you need to understand how to state Newton's law of gravitation in a proper way. Let's try to understand how we can state Newton's law of gravitation. Imagine that we have two spherical objects. Let's say the mass of the this object is m1 and the mass of this object is m2. We are taking spherical object because in this case we can assume the total mass of the object is concentrated at its center. So that's the reason we are taking these two spherical objects. And Newton's law of gravitation is only valid for point masses. So mass you can treat as a point mass if two masses are very far away from each other. Means the distance between the centers of the masses is much much greater than size of the object we can also treat as a point mass so these things i have discussed in the other videos you can check for more detail but today's class we will just focus on how to state newton's law of gravitation now imagine that the distance between the centers means the distance from center to center is equal to t then the force of gravitation between these two masses will be directly proportional to the product of these masses and force of gravity will be inversely proportional to the square of separation between their centers. So this is how you can state Newton's law of gravitation. Let's say this is one and this is second. So we can write down this one in equation form. So we can say F is proportional to M1, M2 divided by D squared. We can write down in equation form now. We have to use constant. So we have capital G. This is universal gravitational constant. So we can say G M1, M2 over D squared. So this is equation you can use to calculate gravitational force on any object. For example, in this case, the gravitational force on this object, this is F1, let's say, and the gravitational force on the second object, let's say this is F2. So F1 in this case will be equal to F2 in magnitude, but direction will be opposite. So we can also use negative sign here. These two forces are equal, but opposite in direction. Now let's try to write down our answer for this question. And also you need to understand gravitational force is the center force. So it acts from center to center. So maybe you imagine why the force is not in this direction. Because gravitational force is center force. So acts from center to center. Means it is acting along this line. This is how you can define 
Newton's law of gravitation. The first mark you will get if you have written gravitational force between two point masses. You have to be very clear. This law is only valid for point masses. So you have to mention point masses directly proportional to the product of the masses. You will get one mark and that is B1 mark. And the second mark you will get if you have written inversely proportional to the square of the separation. Uh, you can say inversely proportional to the square of distance between the centers. You will get the second B mark. This is how marks will be awarded for this question. For the second part, we need to use Newton's law of gravitation and we need to show that gravitational field G at a distance R away from a point mass capital M is given by this equation. So first of all, let's try to imagine what is given to us. Imagine that we have a point mass capital M here and this mass has a gravitational field around itself. This question is simply asking us to find out the value of gravitation field at a distance small r away from this mass at distance r means at this point we need to find out value of g means we need to derive this equation and we need to use newton's law of gravitation so first of all we need to understand what is g this is the gravitational force per unit mass g is gravitational force per unit mass so here we can write down per unit mass so per unit mass unit mass is taken as 1 kg so we can say unit mass is small m now you need to imagine at this point we place a unit mass and we need to use now newton's law of gravitation and we need to find out magnitude of the force on this unit mass that is what question is asking us so simply in this case we can say g small g this is equal to gravitational force so the gravitational force between these two masses will be equal to capital g capital M small m divided by the distance between the centers these are point masses so it simply means that you need to take the distance from this mass to this mass and we need to divide this one by unit mass so this is over unit mass so in this case simply you can cancel this m with this m so we left with capital G capital M over R square. So this is what question was asking us to derive. And you need to understand this capital M, this is point mass. So this is point mass. This is not unit mass. This is point mass capital M. Or you can say this is source of gravitational field. Simply we can say this is source of source mass. We can write down simply source mass. This question has two marks. The first mark you will get if you have written gravitational force per unit mass. And the second mark you will get if you have derived this equation. So there are two marks per this question. For part D, it is given to us the Earth has a mass of 5.98 times 10 to 24 kgs and a radius of 6.37 times 10 to 6 meters. The Moon has a mass of 7.35 times 10 to 22 kgs and radius of 1.74 times 10 to 6 meters. The Earth and the Moon can both be considered as point masses at their centers. They have made this assumption so we can use Newton's law of gravitation. We can treat them as point masses. The centers are at a distance of 3.84 times 10 to 6 meters apart. Show that gravitational field at the surface of the moon due to the mass of the moon is this. It simply means that we need to find out value of G at the surface of moon. First of all, you can image a beautiful moon. So this is a beautiful moon. For this moon, the radius of the moon is given. So we have the radius of the moon and we have the mass of the moon. Mass of the moon is given to us that is equal to 7.35 times 10 to 22 kgs. And radius of the moon, imagine that this is capital R, means the distance from the center. This radius is given to us and this is equal to 1.74 
times 10 to 6 meters. We need to find out value of g. In order to find value of g, we need to understand g is equal to capital G capital M over r squared. R is the distance from the center of the object. So this is the distance from center. So this is R is distance from center. Distance from center. And M is the mass of the source mass. In this case, G is a constant. And value of G you can find in the data. And G is equal to 6.67 times 10 to minus 11 Newton meter square per kilogram square. And the mass of the moon is given. That is 7.35 times 10 to 22. And the distance from the center of the moon is equal to the radius of the moon. And that distance is 1.7. 4 times 10 to 6 square. If we solve this one, our final answer will be 1.62 newtons per kg. Newtons per kg. And so this is value of g. Means this is value of g at the surface of moon. And this one is equal to 1.62 newtons per kg. It simply means that if you place a unit mass at the surface of the moon, 1 kg mass will experience force 1.62. If it is 2 kg, force will be double and so on. So this is how we can answer this question. And this is what we need to show g is equal to this one. And this question has only one mark. If you have shown g is equal to this, you will get one mark. And that is answer mark. Very straightforward question. Simply you need to plug in values. If you have basic understanding of g, then you can answer this one very quickly. For the second part, we need to explain why there is a point x on the line between the centers of earth and the moon. Where the resultant gravitational field due to earth and the moon is zero. That point actually we call is a neutral point. Point x is called neutral point. Why we call neutral point because if we place any mass at point x the force on that mass due to the moon will be to the right we can say force by moon and mass at neutral point will also experience force due to earth and these two forces they will be equal in magnitude and opposite in direction so the resultant force on the mass will be equal to zero so the mass will just stay at address if we just place at that point so the net force will be zero another way to explain this one is the gravitational field gravitational field due to moon in this case is to the right and gravitational field due to earth at this point is to the left and these two fields they are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction so that's the reason we call this point is a neutral point and the net field at this point will be equal to zero means there is no net gravitational field at neutral point and this point is very important very important because if you want to send object from the surface of earth to the moon you only need to provide energy enough energy so that object can reach this neutral point after that we no need to supply energy because then moon will take over and due to attractive force of the moon object will be attracted towards moon and this is very important when we send any mission to any other planet or we send any mission to moon so the understanding of neutral point is very important now let me explain to you how you can write down your answer this is how you can write down your answer simply you can say fields due to moon and earth have equal magnitudes and they are in opposite directions you also need to understand g is a vector it's not a scalar so very important point you need to understand gravitational field this is vector quantity g is a vector quantity not a scalar quantity so this is how you can answer this question has two marks if you have written fields have same magnitudes you will get one mark if you have written they have opposite directions you will get second mark for the last part we need to calculate the distance small x of point capital x from the center of the moon it simply means that we need to calculate this value of distance it means we need to find out value of x but for this question the distance between centers of 
of moon and earth is given to us so simply we can write down this distance value of this distance is given that is equal to 3.84 so we can say this distance is equal to 3.84 times 10 to 8 meters so this is the total distance so we can say the distance between neutral point and from the center of our planet that distance will be equal to 3.84 times 10 to 8 minus x now we need to find out value of x but we have already discussed at this point value of g due to our planet and value of g due to the moon is the same we will use this fact and we will calculate value of x so simply we can say g due to our planet at neutral point this is equal to g due to moon at neutral point these two quantities are the same so g due to earth we have to write down capital g we need to write down mass of earth and the distance between the neutral point from the center of the planet and that distance is equal to 3.84 times 10 to 8 minus x square of this quantity this one has to be equal to capital g times capital m and this is the mass of the moon mass of the moon divided by distance between neutral point and center of the moon and that distance we have said that is equal to x square so in this case now we can cancel this capital g with this capital g and we can plug in values of mass of earth and mass of planet in this case we have mass of earth that is given to us that is equal to 5.98 times 10 to 24 and this is divided by 3.84 times 10 to 8 minus x square of this quantity and this is equal to mass of moon mass of moon is given that is equal to 7.35 times 10 to 22 divided by x square now we can cross multiply means we can multiply like this we can cross multiply and then we can solve this one for x if we solve this one for x our final answer for x will be equal to 3.8 times 10 to 7 meters so this is the distance from the center of the moon to the neutral point so this is how you can calculate so this is value of x this is what we need to calculate this question has three marks the first mark is c mark you will get one mark if you have written the distance between the center of earth and the neutral point if you have written that distance is equal to this you will get one c mark in the second c mark you will get if you have equated g due to earth is equal to g due to moon means if you have written this step you will get the second c mark if you have written this step and the third mark is answer mark if you have got right value of x you will get third mark so this is how marks will be awarded for this question in the next video we will be talking about remaining questions from this paper and if you have any questions or you have any doubts please leave your questions in comments and i will answer as soon as possible and if this video was helpful so please leave some comments and if you want me to explain any questions also you can leave that question in comments let's study together let's improve together and also on this channel a lot of videos i will be uploading not only limited to a level physics i will also upload videos about AP physics and also a lot of videos about competitions such as physics bowl competitions from US and also BPHO and also admission test for Cambridge and Oxford means path questions and anger questions also I will be uploading on my channel and also I will explain those questions in detail so please like and subscribe so we can work together and we can improve together